Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri. Today we're gonna to talk about getting help for R programming. Um, we're gonna start inside of R and then we're gonna do external resources to R itself. So to start off here, let's do a new R script. And today we're going to learn how to find help for R. So just to start off with, there is actually a function inside of R to actually help you, and this is called uh, the help function. So let's just start off with something that we know from our first few videos. Um, we know what the hist function is, which is the histogram function. Um, so you can find help inside of R by typing help, um, doing the parentheses, doing some double quotes, and then typing in some sort of function. And then we'll copy and paste this below. And you'll notice over here in our studio, um, we were originally on the packages tab. You could have been on the plots tab or something else, um, but the help tab will pop up and it will show you what you've searched for. So I searched for the histogram function and on the right hand side here, R will give you some nice documentation. Um, I'm not going to say this is always true. So the documentation is actually created by the person who writes the package inside of R. Um, yes, I've written my own packages and my documentation probably is nowhere near as good as these ones, but most of the big functions you'll be using will have good documentation. So they typically give you some sort of description on what it does. Um, it gives you a basic usage, talks about the arguments. So don't get confused here. Um, the arguments are going to give you everything that's possibly could go inside of this function. Um, you'll notice when we did the hist function, so let's just do this real quick. We did the histogram of the Nile data set, and it created this cool histogram, um, but all it was was one input. You'll notice here there's all kinds of other inputs you can have, which can be a little confusing. Um, so this talks about, you know, X, which is what we put in talks about you know different things you can specify here so you can specify different angles um, you can do borders right you can do different labels and titles so these are important for like plotting out some chart and you need a exact label for your manager to read or for someone else to read um, there's a lot of different stuff inside of functions and then if you go down there's typically a detail section that talks a little bit more about it and a lot of times there are references which I really enjoy from a model validation perspective in finance because I don't trust every package that I use and so I actually go and validate and make sure that what was provided actually does what it says it does. For most of you, this is not important, but it's something nice to have. And then it'll give you some C also, so these are things that might be related to what you're doing. But the most important part for me is the examples section. So. I typically know like I have this function called hist, for example, I need to create a histogram, but I don't really know how to use it or what's required. Um, I'll typically start off here looking at the usage um, and then reading some of the arguments to kind of get an idea of what goes into it. But I typically only read the first few and then I usually just skip all the way down to the bottom here to the example section. Um, this gives you an example right here. So I would look at this code and look at the function itself. So the simple example provided has one input. Um, let's just try doing something with one input, which is what we did over here. But you can read through and there's a lot of usually more complex examples and setting things up. I typically try to avoid the complex examples just because I feel like if you're new to some function, it can be a little overwhelming to see all the different inputs that could potentially go inside of it. So this is a good example of kind of one of those convoluted examples. But next, we wanna talk about the actual examples in here. So R can actually run these examples for you. So the examples can actually be ran using another function called the example function. So we wanna run these examples um, for histogram. To do this, you just type in example, which is the function we're gonna use, and then you type in the double quotes and we're gonna put in hist, which is the function we're looking for, and you hit enter. Okay, so now you can see over here on the right, this code on the right from the example section matches the code on the left here. It creates data for you, because that's 
part of what this example does, and it runs this histogram function, which is fine. Um, you can hit return to see the next plot. So that generates this, and you can see all of this code that it provides. Again, all that stuff I was talking about was a little more convoluted. It's because it was adding, for example, like numbers on the bars. It was adding, you know, different types of labels. But it's going to run this entire example for you, and it shows you kind of like, okay, these are some cool things I can do with it. And then if you hit enter again, you can see the next example. This gives you a different kind of unique, I guess, perspective. Um, you can enter again. And sometimes, just to let you know, when you hit enter, it seems like nothing's happening. It's just because the code is larger, or it's trying to pull something, and it's thinking, um, just give it some time, it will come up. Okay, so this took forever to run. It took at least a few minutes. So it's gonna be a little frustrating if you're running this, but it generated some stuff, which is fine. It shows you, though, on the right here, you can add um, distribution curves, so continuous curves over your histograms. Um, the top one is a QQ plot, for example. So cool things to do. So this is just kind of how to use the help function and how to use the example function. So I forgot to put this up here in our notes. Okay, but something else you can do is you can actually search through R. So a lot of times you're not gonna know exactly what the function's name is, and so you might wanna search for it. So you can also search inside of R using a function. Um, I'm gonna put a little note here too. You can actually search using RStudio, which is a little bit easier. Um, but just to start off with, let's say we want to search for OLS, which is ordinary least squares. Um, to do this, I would type in like help dot search, and then you'd put in whatever you want here. So you could type in multiple words. It doesn't have to be just be one word, one topic. But just to give you an example here, we're gonna search OLS, paste it in our code below. And on the right here, it'll give you the search results. So it talks about, you know, there's the tidy tools and you can scroll through here and kind of look to see if you can find what you're looking for. Um, I've kind of glanced at this before. Here's like OLS of VECM, so vector error correction models. I'm not the biggest fan of this. So I'm just showing you guys this is something cool you can do. Uh, it can be helpful. I'm not a big fan of searching inside of R. I don't think R has a very good um, search kind of properties within their programming, but you can like narrow this down as well. So let's say OLS, maybe I'm just terrible at creating searches, for example. So we can do help search and then we can do like linear regression. So maybe this will help us out finding something better. Um, you run this and if you kind of scroll through well, there's nothing to scroll through, but there are a few different options here. Things you can look at. Um, typically what we use is LM, which is linear model, which is kind of a function for doing OLS. Uh, I don't really see it here. So again, I'm just not the biggest fan of the search. Okay, so just to show you guys a few more things here. Um, if you wanna search inside of this, so let's say there was like pages of search results here. You can come up here to the top where it says find in topic next to the search results. So you type in like linear, and then you see here it comes up with the first one, which is simple linear, and then you can hit enter, and it will take you to the next one, and you know you hit enter again, take you to the next one. So that's something easy to use to find a word or a topic specifically inside of your search results. Also in our studio, you can go up here to the top right where there's a little magnifying glass, and you can search topics here. So let's just search like Arima, for example, and in this case, it finds an actual function called Arima, and so it pulls up all the information on this. Okay, and if this doesn't provide you with what you need, then we're gonna go to my favorite source, which is just using Google. So I would skip this part up here. Um, our search isn't the greatest. It's something that can be helpful, it can be useful, uh, but realistically, if you need information on a function, it's great to use the help command here. Um, but at the end of the day, if you need actual help on finding something unique, finding some function, I think Google is a better source. Um, I'm gonna list out a few different things here. So some of my favorite sites here, this is really gonna depend what you're looking for, and I'll show you guys an example here in a second, but I like Quick R, which is going to be statsmethod.net. I also really like rbloggers.com. 
and of course Stack Overflow and Stack Exchange. So let's just open up Chrome here um, and let's search something specific. So let's see um, R linear regression. And so this pops up, you can open your first one that comes up, but in general, I look for things that I've noticed, like here's Quick R, which is one of the ones I like. Quick R is very well organized, which is why I like their website, but it gives you some basic kind of examples. It talks a little bit about how you do it, um, but just in general, a lot of these websites are gonna give you simple examples and quick ways to learn things. Um, I don't think this is the best way to learn how to program in R, which is what a lot of people do. Um, but it's perfect for like, you know, I'm learning the basics of R, I need to do like a OLS model, so how would I do that? And then just going in and searching. I'll show you guys also, if we scroll down here, let's see. Here's R Bloggers. This is another one I talked about. Um, I really like this website as well. So these websites just have great contributors, people in the community that are writing material and helping us understand the statistics side, but also understand the programming side. Um, there's typically really simple examples, which I really do enjoy from programming inside of this. It's one of the advantages I think of R is the community of people that contribute. So here's like an example. So they use LM, which I mentioned earlier, so linear model to do an OLS regression. Um, they give you, this is like a super simple example, right? It's the data is gonna be the input. Uh, you're gonna have your Y and it's gonna be regressed on your X's. And then it's gonna assign it to some value, which we talked about earlier. And then they're gonna run a summary. So they tell you like after you run this code, you're gonna need to run summary because you need to see what comes out of it. So they give you a lot of details in a lot of these websites. Uh, but in general, I really like going to Google for R solutions. I do not like to search inside of R. Um, searching for functions in R, if you already know the functions, great. But getting actual help on how to implement it can be much easier uh, through Google searches and through some of the websites I've mentioned before. And finally here to wrap up this video, um, you can search R packages. So this is extremely helpful when you have like an R package. Um, and you know, for example, I'm using some function out of it, but I wanna do similar types of activities. So let's just say we're gonna do time series, for example. Um, there's a package called ATSA and it does time series. And so you might be using a function that you found on Google. And what you want to do is you want to, instead of like just doing like your ARIMA model that you found in it, you'd like to do like autocorrelation, partial autocorrelation testing, I don't know, something like that. Um, so you can actually search through these packages and I'm gonna put a little note here that capitalization matters. So I cannot stress this enough. If you do not do the capitalization correctly on the packages or on the functions, a lot of times it just won't work and it'll tell you it doesn't exist. So when searching, when working in R, make sure to capitalize correctly. And so for this example, we're gonna look at the package. So you're gonna type in package equals a TSA and you'll note here that the first A is lowercase the rest is capital because that's how the package name is written then you're going to paste it below run it and then it's going to give you this really cool kind of simple overview um, it'll tell you you know it's documentation for this package it'll tell you the version which can be important sometimes um, and then you can just scroll through here and see all the different things inside of it so here's like a list of just cool things inside the package so I mentioned ARIMA which can be seen here. So there's like a forecast for an ARIMA model. Um, something else you might wanna do is like, you know, stationarity testing. So here's like the augmented Dickey-Fuller test. Um, this is actually my favorite augmented Dickey-Fuller test based on the output in R, but this kind of helps you show you what's in the package. And then if you want to look at something, so let's look at this ADF test. You just click on it and it will open the exact function and show you, you know, what we looked at before, giving your usage, your arguments, details. So this one's actually pretty detailed uh, with giving new mathematical examples. And then again, we're gonna scroll down to the bottom because this is what we really care about. We care about those examples. And then it will also show you, you know, other things that you might be interested in as well. So anyways, that's how you get help in R. Just to kind of summarize this up really quick, um, the help function is awesome if you know the function or if you know your package. Um, you can use help search if you're looking for something specific, but I don't find this very helpful in general. Um, most of your good searches and good help is gonna be found on Google. 
Um, these are some of the websites I really enjoy. I have found somewhat helpful uh, throughout my career and my academic career as well. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.